Hello! Today's stories come from r slash pro revenge. We've got two stories. First up, you should always pay your accountant, especially if you've got skeletons in your closet. My buddy is an accountant. He has his own firm. His biggest clients are small to medium sized businesses. Well, he had a client who owned four different clubs and bars in two different cities. Client was always shady, always slow on payments, etc. I was also a customer of one of the bars. They had poker games that I would play in on Thursdays. Well, one day, I'm at my buddy's house having a few beers, and he's complaining about non-payment from a client. I ask who. He doesn't want to say. But it's really bugging him because it's a significant chunk of change. He then says the name. We'll call him Scott. I'm like, wow, Scott isn't paying you? He then says Scott is saying business is way down, and I think that's odd. I've been going to one of Scott's places, and every Thursday is packed. My buddy looks at me and goes, really? I go, yeah. He does this new cash discount thing, 15% off your tab if you pay cash. My buddy goes, really? I tell him about my experience at Scott's bar, and eventually the topic changes. A few weeks later, my buddy calls me up and says, you going to Scott's bar to play poker? I said, yeah. He says, can I join? I go, sure. He joins. We get a few drinks in us, lose our money at poker. My house is closer, so he decides to crash there. On the way over, he breaks down his theory. He thinks Scott is vastly underreporting his revenue. The reason why he suspects Scott is offering cash discounts is because cash is easier to hide. He says he's going to do a deep dive on Scott's finances. My friend tells me his plan is to go to all four of Scott's establishments, get the prices he charges at each place, piece together how much alcohol he's buying versus how much Scott is saying his revenue equates to. He looks up how much Scott is paying in payroll, rent, bills, etc. Keep in mind, he has access to all this info. And he determines that Scott is basically using his credit card receipts plus a little bit of cash to cover his cost of his business to include rent, payroll, insurance, liquor, food, etc. However, based upon the amount of products he's selling, he's suspecting Scott is underreporting his total income by about 35-40%. to 40%. He goes back into Scott's books even more, and he figures in the last year Scott has been underreporting his sales by 35-40%, to 40%, but he's also been underreporting his sales by at least 20-25% to 25% for years on end. Simply put, there is no way Scott is going through as much product and as much alcohol as he's purchasing and having the revenue numbers that he's claiming. He's underreporting his sales to his accountant, which means he's also underreporting his earnings to the IRS. By this point, Scott owes my friend thousands of dollars that he hasn't paid. He said his total amount owed could buy a brand new motorcycle. He never gave me an exact number. My friend decides to heck getting repayment from Scott. Let's get repayment from the IRS through the whistleblower program. He's estimating Scott's underreported his revenue by millions of dollars over the course of years. The whistleblower fees he'd earn from the IRS far outweighs the amount Scott owes him. The IRS will pay between 15 to 30% of what they collect. So, with the assistance of a lawyer, my friend gathers all the evidence he has of Scott's underreporting to the IRS and files a whistleblower report with the IRS. During this time, my friend fires Scott as a client for non-payment. Now, this part gets boring, because there's a lot of legal wrangling and back and forth. This went back and forth. However, eventually, the IRS comes down on Scott, and they come down hard. It's estimated that Scott underreported his income to the IRS by about $4.5 million. Now, my friend never told me, how much the IRS was able to recoup, but Scott's businesses are no longer his businesses. And $4.5 million would put the whistleblower reward at $675,000 to $1.3 million. Keep in mind, it's based on what the IRS collects, not the amount that's reported. I've asked my friend how much he got in the end, and he simply says, I no longer have a mortgage, and it would have been much cheaper for Scott to just pay me. Oh goodness, what a doozy. A prime example of when choosing the cheap option ends up being the more expensive route. And what an interesting program. It's almost like paying a commission to whistleblowers. Let's check out some of the top comments before moving on to the next story. Joey Jojo Jr. Shab said, My takeaway. If I'm going to 
underreport my income by not reporting most of the cash payments I receive, I need to be sure to purchase a similar percentage of my supplies off the books. Paradise replied, and pay your accountant on time. Sarah Barra added, even the mob keeps its accountants happy. You don't mess with the money man. Someone else asked, but did he get the motorcycle? OP replied, the motorcycle was just a roundabout way of giving me a figure without giving me a figure. He's not a motorcycle guy. I, however, am. Ali Ketch said, I am an accountant. I had a client who came to the attention of our version of the IRS for an audit. Total ache, but managed to get him off of the audit. At the end, I asked the auditors how the entertainment venue came into their attention. They had booked their Christmas party there, and the flyer said, cash only. So they thought it was worthy of a look. Our second story is slightly different, but is an example of real-time pro-revenge for a good cause. Maintenance guy at Senior Living Center gets revenge on satellite TV companies. Over 200-plus residents emerge victorious. I'm the maintenance director at an independent senior living center. It's pretty much an apartment complex in which you have to be a senior citizen to reside. We provide three meals a day, housekeeping, activities, a bus for transportation, and several other amenities to increase the quality of life. Because more times than not, they will spend their final years of their life here. Our facility is family-owned and orientated. Family members of current employees are encouraged to apply for positions. We have one rule in our employee handbook ensure resident safety, happiness, and prolongment of life. I take my job very seriously and take pride in it. I try to go above and beyond to make them all happy. Each resident during the daytime either listens to the radio, plays crossword puzzles, or most of the time watch their favorite TV shows. We do not provide television service. Each resident has to provide it themselves, if they choose. Over the last year, there has been a trend of televisions not working in countless units, and when this happens, they are very upset. When I get a work order for a TV, I go and check it out. Most of the time, there is nothing I can do. If the cable isn't cut, everything is plugged in, and there is no obstruction to the satellite signal, it's going to be a software issue. When this happens, I install an air antenna until their regular service is fixed. I call the company and a tech comes out, fixes it, and usually within a couple hours, it stops working again. This is a never-ending cycle of upset residents. Over the course of an entire year, I spoke with several supervisors and tried to schedule for someone to come out and go through the entire property with me to address each issue. They weren't having that. They wanted me to go to each individual unit and have that particular resident call them. This is almost impossible. A lot of them have trouble hearing and discussing complex matters over the telephone, let alone know the four-digit code and the answer to the secret question. One resident was out of service for over 60 days and I demanded that they refund or discount this particular resident properly. They ended up only giving her $21 off, which isn't even half of a single month's payment. When I spoke with this particular representative, I told them that wasn't enough and I would be throwing all of their dishes in the dumpster. This is just the tip of the iceberg. These companies have caused significant property damage to the facility. They've ran the coax in the gutters and down the downspouts ran cables draped over the sidewalk, which is a tripping hazard, installed dishes in the center of courtyards and wherever is convenient for them. All over the property, cables are strung out on top of the grass for hundreds of feet. They don't bother to bury any cables. I have discussed this numerous times with the owner of the facility of the last year. The last time I spoke with him about it, he gave me the okay to handle the situation and do whatever needed to be done to fix the issue. My options were limited, and the only feasible option I could concoct was using a landline company that didn't need a satellite dish. Well, I have officially finished running new coax to every single unit, and a landline company has come in and installed boxes and services in each resident's apartment. Residents who have previously had to pay a monthly fee for their television service now get their service free of charge. Those that never had service now do. We have saved over 50 residents money every month and all in total over 200 plus now have television service that is included in their rent without any increase whatsoever. This was revenge for the representative talking to Miss T in such a negative and rude tone. I couldn't be happier for my residents. Video of me walking the property in which an orange cable can be seen sprawled out over the grass for over 100 feet. Image I took of how the techs installed the coax to the units. Our senior citizens are some of the most precious things we all enjoy. They hold all of our wisdom. Good day. 
oh my gosh, we need to clone OP. What an amazing person. So few people have such a passion for bettering people's lives in general, never mind those in their final years. We'll wrap up today with some feel-good, well-deserved praise for OP, along with a few extra details in the comments. 7 Leprechaun 7 said, Ain't nobody gonna be talking that way to Miss T. Good stuff here, really good stuff. OP replied, I mean, come on, she's 92 years old, a firecracker, but nevertheless a bit aged. Every single time they ask her for the four-digit code, she never remembers it. This causes her to get all worked up like you wouldn't believe. She would even start to shake. This makes my blood boil. Never again, I say. Someone else said, I love your heart towards your residents. It makes me sad that this isn't pro-revenge. They lost revenue, but only revenue. I hope they are held accountable for their actions soon. Please report them. OP replied, Well, when I told a customer representative on the phone that I was going to throw the satellite dishes in the dumpster and that they could retrieve them at the end of the day, he replied with, You can't do that. Watch me. They breached their contracts and we have formidable attorneys. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.